Hello and welcome to this short overview of Particle Flocker. Particle Flocker is a real-time particle-based flocking system for Autodesk Maya. It allows you to very rapidly create realistic groups of flocking animals like birds or fish using Maya's own dynamics system. Because Particle Flocker is built using Maya, the workflow for creating flocks is pretty much identical to any other particle-based system in Maya. This, in turn, means that animators and effects artists should be able to start creating beautiful flocking animations very quickly with minimal training. Another great thing about Particle Flocker is that it's editable in real time simply by updating some simple attributes. There's no need to perform lengthy pre-computations or simulations, and flocks can be edited in real time whilst being played back in the viewport. This means that animators will spend more of their time making great looking flocking animations. So once Particle Flocker has been successfully installed, you can simply run it by pressing the shelf button that's provided in the installation folder. When you press this button, you'll be presented with this UI, which initially will be a blank UI with a number of sections and a message that says no Particle Flocker nodes exist in the current scene. So in order to start using a Particle Flocker, we need to create a node, and this is done by pressing this button. So when I press this button, a couple of things will happen. Uh, the first thing you'll see is there's an object that appears in the scene. This is our particle flock and node. And I'm also presented with a number of attributes in the UI. These are global attributes for this particular particle flock and node. So a particle flock and node is actually an implementation of a Maya field node, uh, a bit like the standard fields that you find in Maya, like a Newton radial or turbulence field. Because of this, it means that we can work with Particle Flocker in exactly the same way as we would any other field in Maya. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to create a few particles in the scene using the Particle tool. And in order to attach these particles to this field, I'm simply going to use the Fields Effect Selected Objects menu item. So now if I just increase my time slider range a little and hit play, you'll see some basic particle flocking behavior taking place. Um, now there's currently no steering behavior associated with this particle flocker node and so the particles are simply going to be following the basic flocking rules. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about particle flocking systems and how they work, we've actually compiled a brief breakdown of the theory and research behind particle flocking systems and they're on the particle flocker website and you might find this useful to browse through as it explains particle systems step by step and it might help you to understand a little bit more about what's going on under the hood. So the next thing we have to do is to add some steering behavior to this particle flocker. And this is achieved by creating targets. Uh, and we create a target by simply pressing the add target button. As long as we've got the particle flocker that we're currently working on selected. So if I just hit add target, this will create a locator node in Maya which represents the target point of this particular target and it also provides some attributes related directly to that target locator. So the first steering type is seek and this is the most common steering type used in particle systems and what this will do is it will make the particles essentially try to get to the target. So if I move the target over here and hit play you'll see that these particles will suddenly start to move towards that target. Now this target is fully animatable, um, so we can change the location of this target and the particles will suddenly change their behavior to try and achieve the new target. Um, so what I'll do is very quickly set up some keyframe animation on this locator. So what we should see now is as the target moves around the particles will change their directions to try and get to the new target. Now currently they're moving quite slowly so if I was to increase the maximum speed of the particles you'll see that they'll suddenly start to get a lot faster. However they are bunching up quite a lot and in order to resolve this we can play around with the void separation which is the distance that the particles will try and stay apart. So if I increase this value um, and we also need to increase the maximum force as this changes how much force particles can apply to one another. So if I increase this value, let's bring the separation down a little, 
you'll see now all of a sudden they're achieving the target a lot easier. Now just to make this a little bit more interesting I'm going to create some extra particles here. I'm going to use an emitter. Uh, let's just move this guy out of the way a little way. Um, I will have to reattach the particle to the field in order to do that. Um, but what we'll see now when I hit play is an awful lot more particles all trying to get to that target. Now I think that's probably enough. Um, it's probably more than enough. So I'm just going to delete this emitter and set this as the initial state for that current particle. And also to help us see the directionality of these particles, I am going to enable the render type streak which I find the most useful when dealing with uh, these kinds of particles. So we can now start to see that these particles have direction. So if I play this again, you'll see how the flock tries to get to this target. Now obviously this is a large flock because they're all trying to stay quite far apart. We can bring this point separation down and you'll suddenly start to see that the behavior changes drastically. So just by playing with some of these parameters, you can get amazing results very rapidly. OK, so the next steering type is flee, which is, again, fairly self-explanatory. And what that will do is it'll mean the particles will try and evade or get away from uh, the target. So if I change it to flee, you'll suddenly see that they all shoot out in all sorts of directions. However, they are still obeying the basic rules of particle flocking and they're staying in little clusters together. And you can see how they're behaving different. Now if I change it back to seek, they will suddenly adjust and come back towards that target. So having covered those two steering types of seek and flee, uh, we come on to wonder. Now what wonder does is it essentially makes the particles uh, fly around in fairly random directions. However, the position of the target in this case makes no difference at all to the behavior of the particles. So if I hit play on this now, you'll see that they'll just start to mill around in seemingly random directions. And this, I guess, is great for things like fish just swimming around on a coral reef or perhaps bees buzzing around. Now, there is one extra type, which is path following. Um, but for this, we require a curve type as opposed to a transform or a locator. So in order to create this uh, a path follow type I need to go into Maya and create a curve. Uh, any type of curve will be fine whether it's a CV curve, EP curve, Bezier curve shouldn't really matter. Um, but once that curve is created I need to hit the add target button so it defaults because it detects that it's a curve it defaults the steering type to path following so if I just remove the other target for now, so I'm just left with a path follow curve, and I hit play, what will happen now is that the particles will try and follow the curve as best they can without really any concern over the direction or you can see here they're jumping from one part of the curve to the other. Um, all the particles are concerned with is trying to stay, trying to stay within a tube that essentially follows the curve around and they can leap as you can see here from one point to another. So I just wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the other attributes that are available on a target. Um, we also have a radius and a weight value. So I've set up a simple example here with a particle emitter and two targets. And so when I hit play what's going to happen is the particles aren't sure which target is the priority and so they basically try to fly towards a point which is halfway between the two. Now what I might want to do is I might want to make this target say half as important as that target and so I can use the weight to essentially halve that one's value. If I set it to 0.5 you'll see that although it is still adding something to the system the particles are not flying directly to this target um, it is only 50% of what the other target is and this can be useful if you want to enable or disable a particular target at any point you can animate this value to be 0 or 1 and that would disable or enable that particular target. Um, alternatively and more, probably more usefully we have a radius value and that essentially provides a radius 
over which it target will affect particles. So if I were to remove one of these, just rewind that, and set my radius to, if the radius is set to zero, then essentially it's infinite and every particle will always be affected by that target. As soon as I introduce some radius, so if I set it to say 30, initially the particles will not be affected because they're not within range, but you see that as some of these particles start to get within range of that target, they'll start to fly towards it. And this will be particularly useful when you're animating a target. So I've set up an example scene here that shows uh, two targets. One is a seek target, so the particles are trying to get to that. And one is a flee target, which has a radius of 50. And what this basically means is that when the particles come within 50 units of the flee target, they will try to flee from it, whilst at the same time always trying to seek towards the seek target. Another very useful feature of Particle Flocker is the ability to add obstacles into the flocking system. So to demonstrate this, I'll create a polygon sphere. Um, and then we simply hit the Add Obstacles button. And that will add that particular object into the UI. You can select that at any time and it will highlight the object. So when we now run through this animation, I've got a path follow target in the scene you'll see that these objects will essentially try to avoid all obstacles within the world. Um, we have some control on the global settings for this, uh, which is the obstacle separation. It's how far from the surface of the object the particles are trying to get. You can see here that they're quite a distance away, and this is because we've got our separation set to 5. If I bring this right down, you'll see that the particles will still avoid it, but be much closer to the surface. So that rounds off this overview of Particle Flocker. Hopefully it has been useful and given you some insight into what you can achieve using this very versatile and powerful system. Particle Flocker is currently available for download on the Particle Flocker website for all versions of Autodesk Maya. If you require a demo version of the software or further information about how the system works, please don't hesitate to use the contact address provided on the website. Feedback and feature requests are always appreciated, and we'd also love to see examples of how you've made use of Particle Flocker in your own projects. Many thanks for watching.